So what we did, when we did dynamic tone mapping, we said, okay, we, we need to do desaturation in an anti-clipping algorithm so that the, the less than 1%, maybe half or a quarter percent of the scenes that have you know, very bright saturated colors or just very bright colors um, don't clip. And so what we've done is, is I came up with an algorithm. We determine that scene on the very first frame. If you get a dark first frame and all of a sudden the light comes way up, you have to adapt to that. So we adapt before, but before we couldn't do it fast enough to prevent clipping. So what this release is all about is, well, it's gonna give you better overall scenes, even if it doesn't clip, because what we're, since we have this maximum scene analysis now, we can take the headroom down. So we've taken the headroom down for every scene. So we used to be, when we got a scene, the first frame, we said, well, you have to assume it might get brighter. So we, we add a, a significant amount of pad. Well, now the recommended uh, setting in the Lumigen will be no pad, because if it goes up, we can deal with it on the fly on a frame by frame basis. So we look at the frames, we take that information. And so we were trying to give more, more pop to the image. I don't really like that word, but that's a lot of people define it that way. And basically not have the clipping that we've, you know, six, five years ago, we said, okay, we're gonna see some clipping. We'll work on that later. And so two years ago, we said, we got to do pipeline enhancement. We made major redesign, basically touched the entire pipeline um, of the product and came out with a major release there. This is kind of in that range, but only for colors. Colors and intensities in your home theater are important when you only have 100 nits or 80 nits or even 150 nits. You're trying to take a thousand nit grade or 4,000 nit grade and put it into that 100 nit um, projector and you have to do a lot of on-the-fly analysis to get it right. So before we started this, people have done comparisons with us and all other dynamic possibilities and the Lumigen came out on top because there's only a very small fraction of scenes where it matters and it, it's usually a frame or two and it's gone, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't really know. So now we're fixing those frame or twos and making them work as well, but all the scenes should get better because we're able to reduce our um, pad on the scene and use more of the projector's capabilities, more as OLEDs. I have a, a gentleman who's one of our testers who he has an OLED, so he has what, six or 700 nits or so, I don't know. And he says, amazing. I mean, just incredible improvement in what he's seeing. And the release, we just put a test release out two days ago. So um, that is what we're able to do with the FPGA. Before we started the new dynamic tone map, we had the best according to people in the industry. We have a producer that we become friends because he's also passionate about quality. He does post-production for a major studio. He's been using the Lumigen for six years to quality check consumer releases. I really wish I could say what company, but I can't. He, he asked me not to, so I'm not going to. But he talks to all directors. There's a great number of directors who've chosen the Lumigen as the best quality. This was before we did this recent dynamic tone mapping release. The Radius Pro is a, a, a late entry in a long line of video processors. We have been doing video processing and our first product we sold in 2003. So we have been selling product for 20 years, evolving over time. And one of the big things we did early on is decided that we need to have reprogrammability of, in the hardware, not just software reprogrammability, but hardware reprogrammability. So we have, for all our products, always put in what's called a field programmable gate array. And what that is, is reconfigurable hardware. And what that allows us to do is do algorithm changes that other people aren't going to be able to do as quickly and as well as you know, we, we can. So for example, in 2010 timeframe, 3D came out. We had a lot of competitors. We took three months of work to add 3D into our video processor. No one else could, we survived. So that is what the whole model is for the Radiance Pro. We introduced it in 2015 with a good set of features, but we knew we had a lot of features that we could add. We didn't even know about HDR in 2015, but we were able to add that as a free update when it came out. And then we started with static tone mapping. 
to make the image better, and then we added dynamic tone mapping. The Lumigen does dynamic tone mapping, and we've added this, again, like I said, free update, and we've been constantly improving that over the last four to five years to make it even better. So what we can do is we can take algorithms and put them into hardware that we didn't even know about when we designed the product. When we came out with the Radiance Pro, I actually switched from a one size of FPGA to a 50% larger FPGA because I wanted to go out to the market with an FPGA that had half the room left so we could double the horsepower. So when we add new features like dynamic tone mapping, that takes extra gates, but we have those gates. We still have room even after all the things we've done with all the features, instant auto aspect, and you know, all the color space, all the great scaling we do. We uh, can't really do a product every six months like a big company like a Sony. What we need to do is we're making our product better every few months so that people say, oh, wow, look at this, look at this. And so people are getting new customers because they see that the product just gets better and better. We are constantly working on new algorithms, constantly improving our product, adding new features. Basically, we do what the customers really want us to do, and we're very responsive. We have, I think, a well-deserved reputation of the best support. Part of that support is listening to our customers. I want this feature. You know, instant auto aspect for movies, well, I, I think that's a bad idea. If you have an anamorphic screen, especially, you want to watch the whole movie anamorphic. Well, we still added instant auto aspect for those that want to do it. You know, it doesn't make sense to take something that was supposed to be bigger in an IMAX theater, that 1.9 section, and make it smaller. But if you want to do it, you can do it. And so we're, we're very customer focused, and we can't really do a product every year or two. So we, the, you know, it's eight years. We are um, still improving the product. It's not the product that we had eight years ago. We have 18 gigahertz IO for 4K, that's all you need. And since the hardware is reconfigurable, it's not the product of eight years ago. It's the product of the last release you loaded. What we have is a very simple system. If you took our board out, you go, wow. You know, in fact, until we got some competition, people said, wow, why is it so expensive? Our FPGAs are big. They're very expensive. If you go, go, you know, go check them out, see how much expensive, how expensive good FPGAs are. And so that's, that's really, our cost, our FPGA is about half our hardware manufacturing cost or more, actually it's a little bit more now. Um, and so, you know, that, that's gone up significantly. So, but it's a very simple design. We have two, two inputs or two outputs per card on the 4000 series. The 5000 series to isolate things better, all the IO is on one card, the FPGA is on a totally separate card, the microprocessor is on a totally separate card. And so we're trying to isolate things. Um, but it's a very, if you open it up, very simple, elegant design, one U chassis, very low noise. We have a fan, but we can run it fairly slowly. If you really care, you can turn it way down. Or if you want to keep the FPGA um, as, as cool as you can, which does extend the life, um, you can run the, the fan up and it's still quiet. So it's a very uh, compact piece, one U. I think it's a nice looking case. I'm, I'm not a designer, but you know, I think it looks good. Um, and of course, I'm the one who designed it. So <laughs> um, what we want to do is provide, provide that in a one U case, but the 4242 or the 4240 can actually be provided in a compact case. And we've had people buy that. I need to stick it behind my TV. Can you do that? Well, I have a small case for that as well. Um, so cu customers, I was talking to a, a, a trainer who says, I have two Lumigens in my backpack when I travel because of the small compact. And so you couldn't do that with another product like that. And a basically elegant solution. So understated uh, elegance, basically under promise, over deliver is what we want to do. We choose products that are gonna have at least 10 or more years of availability to us, FPGAs. The FPGAs have gotten a lot more expensive. They're more than twice what they were when we started. Um, but they still sell them to us. And so with this ideal place is we have an elegant design that we can produce for many years. Um, and it's going to provide years and years of good service for people. People who bought the Lumigen eight years ago can upgrade to the latest software for no charge and they have a brand new product. We're all about two things. One is what the director intended, what the producer intended, and then making us 
be an improvement not only for video, but for audio. Our 4000 series doesn't have all of the analog stuff I did in the 5000 series, but it, people call me and say, how come it sounds better? You're not processing audio. Well, it's because we're reducing the jitter. The 5000 is all about ultimate reduction in the jitter, 10 picoseconds clock measured, um, and you know, it's, 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 you know it's, it's a random little variation there, but about 10 picoseconds. So we're taking something that might come into us with 200 picoseconds of data jitter, we're reducing it to about 45 picoseconds of data jitter and about 10 picoseconds of clock jitter. So we're, we're able to do all that improvement. But so we're doing that for audio. We're doing constant improvements for um, video. And one of the things I think people notice is you talk about it when you have a bug. Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're not ashamed. We're going to have bugs. We're going to fix them. But most of the bugs we fix really have to do with other products. We're working around this. We're working around that in other products. So, so basically, I get a lot of cases where people say, hey, the Lumigen is not working. But when we finally get to the bottom of it, it wasn't the Lumigen. It was some other product that they've chosen. It's the cable or their audio processor has an issue with, with input at 720p. You know, something like that. They're supposed to work. Maybe they don't. And so we are all about making this system work better. And we've been spending years and years on that. So we've gotten really good about working around issues that are HDMI related. And so, you know, low jitter is really important, but also just working through all the various combinations, possible compatibility issues and stuff. This is my hobby. I mean, I, I love the video. I love the home theater. That's what I do. It's my passion. So I want every customer to have a great experience. I get calls at 10 p.m. on Friday from dealers who are at their wits end. They say, Jim, this is not a Lumigen issue. I'm not trying to say it is. It's not a Lumigen issue, but I'm stuck. Help me, please. And I help them. I mean, that's the whole idea. If you have a Lumigen, you are going to get the world's best support in the video industry from the architect of the product. We don't advertise. So we are about word of mouth. And that has worked very, very well for us. So people in the industry love our product. They prefer it to anything else. It's a much better value. It's a much better picture. If you look at all the quality analysis, we win head to head against anything. Um, and so our $6,000 product competes very well with you know, JBC has their internal. They have their new dynamic tone mapping generation too. I looked at it, looked pretty good. We still excel at that and we still be, believe we will be the best solution for those who want the very best. So we are an add-on, you know, you have to buy you know, the projector and the Lumigen. But what I tell people is if you buy the Lumigen, take it out of your budget, take what's left on your projector, you're going to be better off than if you put that entire budget towards a projector. Head to head, I would go against anybody from an image quality point of view. And with this new release, we just you know, lengthened our lead, so to speak. I, I have a number of people who said, my only mistake was not doing it sooner, not buying a Lumigen sooner or I have a lot of people say, this is the best money I've ever spent on my home theater. That's what we're goal. Our goal is to be very um, trying to rematch with the studio, what you would see in a studio master, what the director intended, what the producer intended. That's a very strict standard and that's what we adhere to. So, and we are very happy that we're getting a lot of directors people in the business, people doing post-processing, who look at all options and they buy the Lumigen because from a quality, image quality point of view, there's just no question. The Lumigen's gonna give you the best quality.